we gather this night to worship the Lord. Jesus said, come all you who are overburdened and I will give you rest. Bring to this night your cares and leave them here at the foot of Jesus' cross. Let us together worship God. Almighty and everlasting God, you love all that you have made and forgive the sins of all who are repentant. Create in us new and contrite hearts that we grieving our sins may receive from you the God of all mercy and grace and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let's join together in singing our first hymn, Amazing Grace. The first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a time of repentance and fasting. Lent provided that time in which new beginners could prepare for baptism, and it was also a time when those who had committed great sins could be reconciled to God and the church through repentance and forgiveness. Then the whole faith community would be reminded of the message of pardon and forgiveness found in the gospel and reminded all about the need to repent and grow in faith. So I invite you into the season of Lent, taking time to do self-examination, to repent, to pray, fast, and spend quality time reading and meditating on God's word. As we begin then, let us confess our sins before God. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and soul and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are, and direct what we shall be as we confess our sins in silence. Let us pray. Amen. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west is his love for those who fear him. He has removed our sins, our debts, and our transgressions from us. Know that you are forgiven. Amen. The scripture lesson this evening comes from Isaiah 58, verses 1 to 14. 
This is from the contemporary English version. Shout the message. Don't hold back. Say to my people Israel, you've sinned. You've turned against the Lord. Day after day, you worship him and seem eager to learn his teachings. You act like a nation that wants to do right by obeying his laws. You ask him about justice and say you enjoy worshiping the Lord. You wonder why the Lord pays no attention when you go without eating and act humble. But on those same days that you give up eating, you think only of yourselves and abuse your workers. You even get angry and ready to fight. No wonder God won't listen to your prayers. You get angry and ready to fight. Do you think the Lord wants you to give up eating and to act humble as bent over bushes or to dress in sackcloth and sit in ashes? Is this really what he wants on a day of worship? I tell you what it means to worship the Lord. Remove the chains of prisoners who are chained unjustly. Free those who are abused. Share your food with everyone who is hungry. Share your home with the poor and the homeless. Give clothes to those in need. Don't turn away your relatives. Then your light will shine like the dawning sun and you will be quickly healed. Your honesty will protect you as you advance and the glory of the Lord will defend you from behind. When you beg the Lord for help, he will answer, Here I am. Don't mistreat others or falsely accuse them or say something cruel. Give your food to the hungry and care for the homeless. Then your light will shine in the dark. Your darkest hour will be like the noonday sun. The Lord will always guide you and provide good things to eat when you are in the desert. He will make you healthy. You will be like a garden that has plenty of water or like a stream that never runs dry. You will rebuild those houses left in ruins for years. You will be known as a builder and repairer of the city walls and streets. But first, you must start respecting the Sabbath as a joyful day of worship. You must stop doing and saying whatever you please on this special day. Then you will truly enjoy knowing the Lord and he will let you rule from the highest mountains and bless you with the land of your ancestor Jacob. The Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. We thank you, O Lord, for the privilege of opening your word. We pray that as you speak to us from it this day, that we might hear and heed the good news through Christ our Lord. Amen. So a good friend of mine said the other day that for Lent, after prayerful consideration, he was giving up Lent. <laughs> He's always a bit of an iconoclast and is good at saying what he thinks and tearing away what he perceives as the false separations that keep seekers away from joining into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. And he believes that the ancient practice of a dark and dreary season of fasting and mourning and introspection gets in the way. He said it had its time and place, perhaps, but now is not the time and the place. And it certainly no longer captures the imagination of folks who do not yet know the love of Jesus Christ. He's not arguing that our recognizing our sinfulness is bad, but rather that our navel-gazing at our sins sometimes misses the point. He suggests that we should instead be celebrating the wonderful and freeing gift of forgiveness. Not that mourning our wretched condition is bad, especially if we perceive our wretchedness primarily in our amazing unwillingness to love our neighbors as ourselves, but that staying there for 40 days just isn't practical or is it necessarily helpful because we need to get busy changing lives and making a difference. Not that fasting is bad, though he does love to eat, I know that for a fact, but that the point of fasting, as Isaiah points out, is to loose the chains of injustice, untie the cords of the yoke, and set the oppressed free. Not eating, being about righteousness gained from punishing your body by keeping it from food, but rather seeing 
that fasting, if you participate in it, is an accumulation of time freed in order that you can do good. And I think Isaiah would agree because Isaiah couldn't be clearer. What stands in our way of a joyful relationship with the Lord is our sin. In particular, the sin of not caring for God's beloved people. Fasting is good because it frees you to do good. No longer weighed down with the challenges of preparing and cooking and eating and cleaning up from meals, we have time to go and care for those who need our attention. Just like the Sabbath, a time away from day-to-day -day life, not a call to idleness, but rather an invitation to step back in and make a difference. And of course, in the process, bring great joy to God while seeing the world through God's eyes. We are enjoined to practice a holy Lent. Be sure to see that Lent is what it was intended to be, an opportunity to review our commitment to bring hope and love and even joy to the heart of God by bringing hope and love and joy to the hearts of our brothers and sisters by using the time we have been given by God, our energy, our very lives, to do the things that ultimately matter. The hymn writer reminds us that soon and very soon we are going to see the king. It also is the reason we who distribute ashes say, from ashes to ashes and dust to dust, life, you see, is temporary and fragile and short. So we are invited to live all of it with purpose. So, my friends, it is Lent. Let's use the time God has given us with good purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. We join together in a time of prayer. Let's bow our heads. We thank you, O Lord, for the season of Lent, for the opportunity to come before you with the concerns that are on our hearts and minds. We pray that you would hear us as we pray in silence. Gracious God, we pray for the nation of Ukraine. Mighty God, we pray for those who are sick, who are having surgeries, who are recovering, who need your help as they go through the process of finding appropriate care. We pray, O oh God, for those who grieve, those who this day are hungry. We think, O oh God, of those who cannot find the right clothes, the right drink, the right shelter. We pray, O oh God, with open hearts for those who just need an opportunity to speak to someone who will listen. Oh God, work with your people. Remind us of our calling to be your presence in the world. All this we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who invited us to come and pray that prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our last hymn is Come Share the Lord.
we come to the table of the Lord. You are invited, uh, invited to join us, those of you who are online, by finding bread and beverage uh, and coming to the table with us. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took up bread and broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took up the cup and blessed it and said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Drink all of you from it. O Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Almighty God, we thank you for this meal we have been able to share. We pray that what it represents, what it means, would transform who we are so we might live in ways that bring glory and honor to your name through these elements of bread and juice, reminders of the sacrifice of Jesus our Lord on our behalf. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.